whether you're pulling a tractor or pushing a pencil, most Americans sooner or later have to deal with the age-old question of how to raise their kids. And when it's time to send them off to school, some parents look for alternatives to the much criticized public school system. They find that in some of the more traditional private schools across the country, children are expected to behave like little ladies and gentlemen, or in this school, like little soldiers. Well, if you don't do what you're supposed to do, you, you, get, you get your tail busted. It will either kill you or keep you young. Our, our motto, as you know, is, is our character before career, and we mean it. I'm Colonel Jack Aiden, the Commandant of Cadets here at Southern California Military Academy. I'm responsible for the health and the welfare of all, and the discipline of all of the cadets here at the Academy. Well, we're an old-fashioned school, about 56, 57 years old. Uh, we believe in the ABCs, for example. You either pass or you fail. You're expected to work. If you do not work, then you leave the school. That's all. The real value of this type of training, keep in mind that this type of training is academic and superimposed over it is a Christian education, and superimposed with that is this military education. Atkins. It has a very important meaning for a lot of reasons. First, it gives structure to a boy's life. Many children need structure. Carry on quietly. Let's see, your bunk is number 10, and uh, your block officer is uh, DeLuca and Cloud. I'm Captain Jester Dory. I'm the commanding officer of B-1 Barracks here at Southern California Military Academy. I also serve as assistant commandant, drill instructor, and part-time bus driver when I'm needed. Our society has basically gotten into such a liberalized state that we're afraid to walk our streets at night, we have to keep our doors locked, we're worried about somebody putting a gun in our ribs and robbing us. And I would like to think that the young men that come through this academy and graduate are the type of young men that go out and make our society better. I think the best part about going to school here is that they teach you leadership, you know. It's really a nice place where you get a good education. You get leadership, you know, you get trained more. You get probably free lunch, you know, you don't have to bring your lunch here. Here we have a positive incentive program, this military thing. The military, uh, using the military ranks of the Army, uh, private all the way up through colonel, rewards a man based upon his own accomplishments. I'm a lieutenant colonel at Southern California Military Academy. And I'm a second lieutenant. Master Sergeant Trinidad. And my medals are honor roll, second place scholastic. This is first place barracks award. That one's the perfect attendance. This is courtesy. And this one is because I have tried really hard to, um, yeah, let me see. That's good conduct. And this is Cadet of the Month. I gotta remember what this one's about. It's because, um, good conduct and courtesy. And that's second place barracks. And then this one is for, um, now I gotta go. Exchange! Holds! You guys aren't together on that at all. Let's try it again, gentlemen. This time, let's wake up to what we're doing. Exchange! Holds! Murder, you keep on moving out of your position. Get in line. You be all right? 
you gentlemen would wait until you're given an order, we wouldn't he have did. this problem. He said exchange, but he wasn't even listening, so... Let's talk to her. No. It stings a little, huh? It stings. It hurts. You're going to be okay. You need to go up to the infirmary. Some people think that we put undue pressure, uh, perhaps, with this military layer. We see it just the opposite. We see it as an opportunity for a boy to express himself where he's unable to do so in any other form of institution. Um, come on! Two. I like to begin command over people. Right, please. I said right. I know I have to listen to other people if they're out, if they're hiring me and anything like that. They tell me to do something. I've got to do it. Name tag way too high. Collar brass. Inside of your collar brass is put on. We don't teach warfare here. We don't glorify warfare. We teach them leadership. We teach them the mistakes that great leaders have made. Second squad, right? Hurst. Third squad. I mean, first squad did. Hood. I am Colonel Jim Shahey. I attended this military academy from 1939 to 1945 when I graduated from high school and served for 28 years subsequent to that in the United States Army. I am now currently retired on the retired list of the United States Army and uh, am teaching in this institution. I think that probably the public looks at a military academy as a small reformatory and it certainly is not. If a student comes to a military academy and cannot cope or uh, bring himself to live within the bounds of the discipline and good conduct that we demand, he is generally ousted from the institution. You could not do that in a reformatory. Public schools weren't all that great. They, they don't have a lot of discipline, and I needed it. There's things to work for. It's not just like, well, you go to school just to get an education. You go and you can, if you come neat and polished, you get recognition. You don't just sort of say, well, hello, and that's it. It's people talk to you. The children are just excited when it comes to the dress parades. As you will see, we have anywhere from 500 to 1,000 or more people here at every dress parade. Well, it isn't that exciting when you uh, when you've been going here for three years, you have to practice. What do you do in the infantry? You march, you march, you march. What do you do when your pack has got your back as stiff as starch? There's many a fall in the cavalry, but never a fallen arch. And what do you do in the infantry? You march, you march, you march. What do you do in the infantry? You win, you win, you win. What do you do for the victory? You move into Berlin. The rest of the army is riding, riding through a triumphal arc. What do you do in the dress parade? You march. Oh, you march. Oh, you march. And the parents, uh, I think, get as much, if not more, than the children sometimes. When they hear their son's name called, I've seen the tears flow. Okay. This is his first week, so this has been a big week for him with the parade and everything. and. We really both did very well, I thought, when I dropped him off on Monday. Uh, about Wednesday night, I had a bad attack of the guilt. <laughs> it was really kind of a rough night. I, I had nightmares, and I thought, oh, you know, I hope they're treating him OK. And, but it's worked out real well, and he seems to be very enthusiastic. He made Cadet of the Week for his first week in school, which I thought was terrific. Well, my mother likes it a lot. She says that it's a lot better than public schools. And I felt he needed guidance. He needed discipline, and he needed the academics. Well, my mom and dad, the best part that they like is if I get promoted or not. There is an advantage to a military school. It, not that the military advantage at all, just the fact that it's the opportunity to work one-on-one -on -one with one's peers and achieve in your own peer group to the best of your ability. And finally, to our highest rank that can be attained at this academy, to the rank of Colonel Jamie E. Cruz, the regimental commander. And there have been times when I personally have been kind of choked up. When I worked with a boy for five, six, seven, eight years, and that fellow's out there and he's graduating or something, I'm telling you, it's pretty hard. I want to be in the Army when I grow up. Yes, I'm going to go to the military. Probably join the Marines, maybe. Well, I'm not really sure. I'm, I still don't know what I'm going to do. I really don't know what I'm going to do after I leave here. 
well, if I don't get my ambition as a lawyer, then I'm going into the Air Force. Bless them all. Bless them all. Bless them all. Bless them all.